Alright guys, I want to talk about retirement in the Philippines um, or preparing for retirement in the Philippines. First thing is, this is broad, in the, the first thing is you need to analyse where your money is today. A lot of people go to the Philippines with a limited budget, yet if they're in a position where they can actually prepare before they go, they can be in a much, much better position and increase their monthly income. Um, the first thing is, I would analyse your debt, but get yourself a ledger or spreadsheet you know if you're not computer literate just get yourself it on a piece of paper list all the stuff that you spend your money on every month and account for all your money because there's a good chance you're going to be missed something but just make sure it tallies up to exactly what you're spending and a lot of times you're overspending but at the same time if you can analyze it and see it you start going yeah you're all right i'm spending too much on that i'm paying this on my credit card at the same time I'm spending $200 a month on beer when you could actually say worst case scenario cut the beer out and pay the credit card off or okay I'll split that I'll reduce the amount of beer I'm drinking and pay half you know put the other half on the credit card every month and get those payments right down get rid of the credit card debt has there any finance been left on the mortgage any finance left on the car anything that you can get rid of and work on to make life easier because if you can get rid of debt first and then start and focus on your investments then you start positioning yourself for retirement because instead of being in negative equity you're pushing for profit you're doing the complete opposite you instead of giving interest you're making it now once you get into a positive position get in touch with a financial advisor or whatever because they'll give you some good information a lot of time is tied with the banks I mean in the UK I think a lot of the banks if you're over 30 40 thousand pounds and go in and ask to meet a financial advisor they will tell you how to advise your money for free but do check because some of them do still charge fees but they will help you invest your money wisely or at least invest your money and you make your decision if it's wise or not um, but in the US there is other ways as well because obviously you've got things like the UK has got ISIS and you've got other things like um, some corporate pensions and things like that and I personally recommend analyzing this stuff with a fine comb because at the end of the day as I said myself with Carillion I already knew they were going to steal the pension fund um, so for me when they were trying to get me to enroll in it I just threw it in the bin and said do not sign me up for this because I know Carillion too well but at the same time, I still got some other pensions for other companies, which will mature at a certain point. It's the same as a friend of mine when he uh, was made redundant at Carillion. He suddenly found he never had it so good because five, I was if I think it, was, it might have been five or eight pensions all matured because he was already at retirement age, but he hadn't. He hadn't really looked into his pension stuff, but for some reason, the redundancy activated everything. And suddenly he said, well, Matt, you know, I'm not interested in doing any consultancy work because I need to know how much money I've actually made this year because I've got all this redundancy money where obviously they, they see some of this as being for tax um, plus all these pensions got activated. So he's suddenly sitting there going, I can't earn any money this year because I need to work out what I'm going to be hammered for tax. But now he's got to that point where he's saying, you know what, it ain't worth working anymore. I mean, I would just be giving it to the tax man. It's nice to get into that position and it's nice that he got in that position over his work, but a lot of this tied with civil servant work, etc, etc. It doesn't work for everybody that way. This is why analysing your debt, get rid of debt, analysing your investments and start pushing for investments. Even if you speak to the bank, sometimes they'll say you need $30,000, whatever. Um, then you can actually gear it towards that. And you're probably thinking, well, Matt, you haven't mentioned crypto. The reason I'm not mentioning crypto, if you're thinking about retirement, I'm not going to encourage high-risk investments. High-risk investments are not for everybody. Myself, I've made good money on it. At the same time, um, I've already had more in profit-wise. I've made more profit uh, than I ever invested. Um, I, mean, I don't know what the percentage is. Hang on, I'll actually tell you. So, yeah, I'm up. I'm up by over three hundred. That? That's not correct. 
All right. Um, let's just let's just say I'm up over twenty thousand um, percent. But the point being is that sort of thing is high risk and it involves learning new things. And I would never advise anybody if they're getting late in the game in the sense you set up for retirement. You do not want to be in a position where you've got something you may actually end up losing money on. Um, and I'm just being fair on that. I mean, if you invest in the markets today, I'll tell you the market has just took a dive in the last two days and it's about to go up again. But at the same time, when do you cash it back out? That's the question for you. Um, I know when, but I'm just saying this is a problem because if the markets then take a dip when you need the money, um, you might buy, sell it for more, uh, sell it for less than you paid for it. But anyway, moving past that. The other thing is, there is opportunity still there if you need to increase your income. So the first thing is, look at investments. What can you invest? How much do they need? What's the return on investment? Is it going to give you an annual annual payout? Because that's the sort of stuff you're looking for. If you're getting $1,500, $2,000 a year off some investment you did, it's fine. Because the reason I like that sort of setup, and I'll be honest, I do invest in property and other bits and pieces uh, in the UK and elsewhere because it's a steady income it, it just does that guaranteed on the nose no headaches when you start doing trading and stuff you can have ups and downs and it becomes high risk when you're retiring a lot of time you do not want this hassle you just want on the may the 31st well may may 28th i will receive this amount of money every year blah 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 that's what you're looking for. Um, you can budget for that and you can plan for that. And that's why I do recommend these sort of investments, but they're not going to be high yield in the same way. But you've also got your pension fund coming in anyway. But what you try and do is set yourself up so you've got a steady cash flow that you don't have to worry about. You're looking at having a budget to, to fulfill whatever you want to do because most people do not save enough for retirement. Um, they rely on social security or some other um, backup plan rather than actually having money that they could actually subsidize their own life from their earnings over the, or the lifetime of their working, working life. Um, so for me, it's important that you guys recognize that you can still generate some extra cash and you can fulfill this because one of the things you do have is you've got compounding especially if you're on the run-up to the retirement because you can actually invest now and it will just keep flowing. I've got uh, some investments in the UK that I have not even looked at in five years. I've just put money in there and it automatically keeps rolling the investment. It's growing. I've just got a new investment out of the Seychelles and Australia and I've initially put $3,000 in there um, but that's another one that will compound and it is a bit more high risk, but I'm expecting a 600% return next year. Um, so with that, I'll just leave it. Once it gets to a certain point, I will take the initial investment out, and then I'll just keep it rolling. This is the reality of how I invest, and there's nothing to stop you doing the same. Um, the other side of this being is when you go to the Philippines, understand where your money is going to be going on a monthly basis. Understand the lifestyle you're going to have and sit there and question what do I need? Because a lot of people will adapt quite easily in the sense that they'll go, okay, well aircon's expensive, I can live without aircon. Um, this is, uh, what do you call it, I'm used to having a garden or something but having the budget for I can live without a garden. But some of the times you're actually trying to avoid doing that by simply saying, well, what do I need to do to reach a budget that can allow me to have that garden? One of the first things I would say, if somebody wants a garden, you could go more provincial. You don't have to live in a city. I don't recommend living in a city if you can help it because of the dust and everything else. I prefer being a little bit further out. I like having the ability to take a journey up onto the, uh, the mountains and stuff um, on my doorstep. I like that sort of stuff. So if you do like this space, bear in mind the prices are also cheaper. The further out you go, the cheaper it gets. But also the infrastructure reduces. You go from 
roads to dirt tracks to a little little alleyway through um, through some brush you know it depends how far out you want to go but ultimately there is something to fit every budget um, but I do recommend having enough budget for good medical care I do recommend getting yourself in a position where you have a monthly health care plan tied with having a budget for your property you don't have to lock yourself into marriage and all that sort of stuff I know some guys do um, and that's by choice by choice and at the same time I do understand from a woman's point of view because a lot of them can get into a widow's pension um, after the death let's be honest if you're up for retirement uh, as a lot of the guys say to me I've got 10 good years left in me you know they, <laughs> that's their viewpoint not mine um, but the, the point being is they getting married gives a widow's pension um, in many cases the other side of this being that um, they will look after you you know you hit the right person meet the right setup you could be set up for life and just chill out and relax and a lot of the best people I know are doing quite well because they've got good partners they look after the partner the partner looks after them they they're not living it up they're living within the means which means they're stress-free the only time this seems to fail is when they get invested in stuff that they shouldn't be um, like the legacy scandal stuff um, which is something I looked at myself and I just thought Ponzi scheme and I walked away from it and two months later it collapsed but the point being is if you can get within your means why why push past that in retirement that's that's one of the things I will say just be careful of getting dragged into other stuff as well I mean I get people trying to do stuff for me you know saying oh you could sponsor this or do this and that's like if I sponsor something I don't really want people to know when I did it I, I'll just do it do it as a one-off or whatever because the next thing is you get the knock at the door oh Matt paid for the last one everybody knows you you paid for that so the next thing is you're getting people asking you for the next idea and the next project and they'll at your door every month so personally I recommend if you're retiring just chill out and relax get yourself near a decent hospital though also recognize the issues in the area uh, that may impact your life in the sense of what is going to keep you busy a lot of guys overlook it completely in the sense that I'm just going to go and retire well what have you done for the last 25 years well I've been an aircraft mechanic okay there's no airfields here there's nothing the what well, hobbies do you have it's like well I'm normally at work well the first thing I'd say on that is you've got one major problem you're used to being busy and it's normally around technical stuff so how are you going to keep occupied what is going to keep you flowing with something that is going to keep you occupied and let's say be a really be realistic as well um, it's a bit like an expat I know that has a um, boating area there's a lot of boating projects there that were started by expats and they run out of money they run out of this and that and they never finished them because um, they were going to build a boat for their retirement my personal view on it the same as I've mentioned with the swimming pool um, is you don't need it what you're better off is having 10 expats just booking a monthly trip on something and you just go regularly every month don't need a boat get somebody else that has one and you just pay them every month they take you out island hopping fishing scuba diving whatever you want to do if you find that you're into it in a big way and you want to go out nearly every day or whatever then you start looking at buying a boat between you you don't have to build one in the same way with a swimming pool having a swimming pool is nice but you end up with a hassle of clean air and the fact is everybody wants to come and use your place because it's got a swimming pool so you become being used like a restaurant and bar rather than the fact that it's your private pool um, so from my personal view on that as well I only get a pool if it's worth doing it's a, a lot of this stuff sounds very logical but a lot of people invest in this stuff quite heavily on their retirement and then find out it's a bad idea so I mean my first recommendation is spend six months in the Philippines when on your retirement spend six months there and then decide what you're going to do rent a place to get a feel for whether you like the country or not the other side of this being is you don't need a vehicle 
taxes are cheap enough and if you're only there for six months you'll probably find that your recoup um, well it won't cost you anywhere near what a car would cost you um, if you just use taxis I mean I, I do recommend getting a motorbike but even that I'd recommend for the first six months get familiar with where you are get familiar with the way things work um, learn how the culture operates and how people are but I also recommend that you don't lock yourself into the purchase of a house if you don't have to and what, why, why is that? Well, houses are easy to buy, hard to sell. Same as Spain. They're everywhere. I can show you outside the window. There's houses as far as I can see. And they're still building new ones. These older ones, they're, they're no value. You know, at the end of the day, you're getting a brand new house for the same price. Somebody's trying to sell something that, they, that was built in the 80s with poor construction methods. And they haven't invested a single dollar in it. Um, so the pipes need replacing, windows need replacing, doors need replacing, electrics need replacing and they're still thinking they're going to get the same money as the brand new place that was built up the road. These are the sort of things to look at. Also you've got to remember if you're planning on only living for 10 to 15 years how much would that rent have been compared to that property? Well if you're paying you know, a decent sized place pay maybe 20,000 pesos a month sounds a lot but if you're getting a nice place, it's not too bad. You know, at the end of the day, you're paying for like a, depending where you are, three, four bedroom in a private subdivision, parking area, etc. That That's fine. Other people um, are quite happy in a smaller place. I mean, the cheapest place I've seen an expat live in was 1,500 pesos. Um, very basic place, wasn't a great area, but at the same time, he was happy there. You know, at the end of the day, he didn't really have any belongings so there's nothing to steal um, so he was pretty chilled out there you know then the day he had his motorbike he did his own thing fine he was happy at that because he, he he had the majority of his money because what he did instead of investing in the house that he wasn't really fussed about he went touring on his motorbike he used his budget for that instead so living within the means is quite an important thing but I also do recommend covering your health healthcare side as well and that's another thing to look at I mean I'm not sure how the US side works I mean the UK predominantly people are on the NHS um, but maybe there is something with your healthcare that could actually cover in the Philippines I'm not sure I have no idea maybe there's some companies that will have that overlap because uh, obviously they've got a history of you as well because you're not starting a new contract with a new company that's got no medical history of you at an older age where you're very very high risk but maybe that's something worth looking into. But ultimately, it's up to you what you decide. Personally, I recommend planning now and start developing towards the retirement. And the same with your house. I do not recommend selling your house unless you really had to. Because um, you've got an emergency base to return to. You've got an asset you can rent out. You've got something that may gain more value over a period of time. But like I said, a lot of guys are signing themselves up for 10, 15 years before they uh, hit a hole in the ground. Um, so from that point of view, I know a lot of people will go, well, I, I send that, I sell that. I've got enough cash that I can just live out those 10, 15 years. Then that's up to you. Personally, it's all about you. You decide what you want to do with your retirement. And I know I'm covering a lot of stuff in the MGTOW, but the, the whole point with this is when you've retired, you're at an age where you just want to chill out, do your own thing. And I'm all for people making that decision. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. I really know it doesn't matter. You're at a time where you've finished your working life and should be able to just enjoy your years you got left doing what you like as long as it's within the laws. <laughs> um, but yeah, you should be able to just chill out and do your own thing. And so, you know, if I was younger, I'd say you don't sell the house, gives you emergency backup. But if you're just thinking, I don't care, gonna sell it, move there. Um, but just be aware, I do recommend the first six months. Don't do anything drastic. Get familiar with it because some people get there, they hate it and then decide they want to go to Panama or somewhere else because they just don't like the Philippines. And there's nothing wrong with not liking the Philippines. It's, it's personal preference. Myself, I like the freedom. And I know lots of other people will say, well, you know, some of those mentioned Thailand. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, 
when I go to Thailand, I'll do some updates relating to Thailand once I've experienced it. I've got some um, students from there in Vietnam that I've taught English, but I haven't spent time there to actually justify the difference. For the Philippines, I find for a lot of people, if they haven't traveled before or um, have a connection with the Philippines, then it's a good starting point because everyone speaks English. Later on, you may actually think, I'm going to go to Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, whatever. But if you're on your first trip or whatever, the Philippines, it does simplify a lot of the stuff because there's no real language barrier. Um, sometimes there's a logic barrier because people have different logic in the Philippines, but at the same time, it's very easy to adapt to. But are other countries easier? Spain is one. Spain Spain's very like the Philippines, though. I find it very bizarre. I mean, even my wife was talking about it today. Um, they said the difference between here and the Philippines with the bureauc bureaucracy and the corruption is at least in the Philippines everybody smiles at you. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's the thing, you know, you can have a laugh at the, these problems. It's like my car today. The, my car has now got to go to Vauxhall. The last mechanic has damaged my engine and I thought it had and that's why I just said, you have that back, you get it fixed and now it's like, Sorry, it, we, we've just got to miss it. It's got to go to Vauxhall because we can't fix it. Ah. Anyway, guys, have a great day. And I'm sure you'll have a great time in the Philippines. A lot of it is just down to planning. And like I said, start at the beginning. The beginning is recognizing if you've got any debt, can you get rid of it? It makes life easier when you get to that retirement point. Get everything paid off while you've got the, the extra income to do so. Thanks for watching.